When Enzo Amore and Big Cass got called up to the main roster in 2016 on the Raw after WrestleMania, they got the most insane, unholy reaction of all time. They were called up without their partner Carmella, but just two years later, Carmella was the only one that remained in the WWE out of the trio. So what happened to Enzo Amore? Where is he now? Why did he get kicked out of the WWE locker room and then fired? All that and more in today's video, but before we get into it, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll give you until the three count. Oh, Rachel Rose, right. hooks the leg. There it is. Let me know if you beat the count in the comments, and let's get into the video. The story of the way Enzo Amore got signed to the WWE is probably the most Enzo Amore story I've ever heard. Enzo and Triple H had shared the same trainer in New Jersey, and when that trainer showed Triple H a video of Enzo cutting a promo whilst doing exercises, that was apparently all it took for him to be given a tryout, which would result him in signing a developmental contract with the WWE and reporting to NXT. He originally went under the ring name of Eric Anthony, but that quickly would be changed to what we would come to know him as for the rest of his time in the WWE, which was of course Enzo Amore. He debuted on the May 22nd, 2013 episode of NXT, debuting as a heel and playing what was described as a cocky Jersey Shore loudmouth, being squashed by Mason Ryan. Stevie Ray, Earthquake, Alundra Blaze. Um, a few weeks later though, Enzo Amore would pair himself with Colin Cassidy, a man who would come to be known as Big Cass. The two would turn face and begin pursuit of the NXT Tag Team Championships. They were mainly just a mid-card team, but the team would have to break up for a while due to Enzo getting injured in training in November 2013. According to Simon Gotch, Enzo Amore's sworn arch nemesis from critically acclaimed video Simon Gotch shoots on Enzo Amore, he broke his leg doing a wrist lock and blamed it on the mat being too loose. Enzo returned in April 2014, reuniting with Cass and feuding with Sylvester Lafort. They had a hair versus hair match at WWE NXT TakeOver Fatal 4-Way, one awesome show that was by the way, underrated show, which he won, probably his biggest win in his WWE career to that date. Soon after this, Carmella would debut with the WWE in NXT and she would join up with Enzo and Cass and this was probably the prime of Enzo's career in NXT. These three got mega over and this was a synonymous trio in NXT and them getting over as much as they did can mainly be attributed to Enzo Amore's mic skills and of course his intro that he would do for all of them during their entrance. <coughs> My name is Enzo Amore, and I am a certified G and a bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. And this right here, this is Big Cass, and he's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. Bada boom, realest guys in the room, how you doing? And there was also that one bit where he goes, and this right here, this is the subscribe button, and you should hit that. 2015 would be the year that Enzo, Cass, and Carmella became stars in NXT. They had numerous tag title shots, and it was their feud with Dash Wilder and Scott Dawson, aka The Mechanics, aka The Revival, aka FTR, that saw them at their most over in NXT. They challenged FTR for the tag titles at Roblox 2016 unsuccessfully, but with how over they were, WrestleMania being near, and the fact they didn't win, a main roster call-up was surely imminent. And that is exactly what would happen as on the Raw after WrestleMania 32 in 2016, Enzo and Cass debuted on the main roster. And yes, they debuted without Carmella, but they debuted to an insane pop and reaction from the crowd. Legit deafening reaction. They cut an awesome promo on the Dudley Boys and they entered the tag title number one contenders tournament and they made it to the finals where they faced the Vod villains, but this would only be another setback. This match took place on Payback 2016 and the match had to end early after Enzo got legit concussed. His sworn arch nemesis and star of critically acclaimed video Simon Gotch shoots on Enzo Amore, Simon Gotch threw him under the bottom rope and his head bounced off the rope before bouncing off the mat 
concussing him. And following Enzo's return from injury, they kind of got lost in the shuffle in the tank division. Well, I guess saying lost in the shovel is a bit unfair, but they kind of lost that new debuting tag team bounce that they had. That huge, overwhelming popularity and overness. I mean, there was still popularity, they were still over, but that momentum was gone and WWE didn't seemingly want to bring it back in any way. They were involved in some high-level programs, such as when they teamed with John Cena against the club at Battleground 2016, or when they faced Jericho at SummerSlam, and they were in the four-way Raw tag title match at Mania 33, which I was there to watch. It was not a bad spot to be in whatsoever, they were on TV every week, getting pay-per-view matches, but they weren't winning the title, and they should have been the top tag team. But WWE had other plans, and Enzo and Cass would break up in 2017, after Cass attacked Enzo backstage, there was that whole mystery attacker angle, it was a bit of a dumb turn. Don't know really know why they did it. But it was his next year in Enzo's career where he went solo for the first time in WWE. And this next year was just so hectic. He switched over to the Cruiserweight division and would very quickly win the Cruiserweight title. And this was just such a really weird time. Because Enzo winning the Cruiserweight title, it was a Vince decision, very obviously, and was done to try help get more eyeballs on 205 Live. But whilst he was champion, Enzo had tremendous backstage heat. He had been kicked out of the locker room after punching a bully, in Enzo's words. He wasn't friends with Cass apparently at the time, they fell out, and the word was that what you saw with Enzo on screen was exactly how he was backstage. He'd bring an outsiders into the locker room, which apparently got him heat, and all in all, was just seen as too big for his boots. And yeah, it was just weird because Enzo Amore, while he was champion, he was still almost getting punished on TV. Like that one time when The Miz just randomly buried him on the mic, or when Braun Strowman, who had nothing to do with the cruiserweight division, just came out during a cruiserweight segment during a commercial and attacked him. Like, what was the point? And I'ma just say it because Enzo's title reign with the cruiserweight title got a lot of hate, but this was a good title reign. And yes, Neville losing the title was very questionable, and at what cost, because he left the company very soon after he lost the title. But Enzo, to me, was a burst of life that 205 needed, and it was pretty much dead once both him and Neville were gone from it. Enzo Amore was set to defend the title against Cedric Alexander at the Royal Rumble, but on January 22nd, 2018, he was suspended from the company. It was confirmed the same day by Phoenix PD that Enzo had been under investigation since October 2017, for alleged sexual assault, and the next day, Enzo Amore's suspension was turned into a firing, as he was fired from the WWE and the Cruiserweight title was vacated. WWE fired him due to his failure to inform them of the investigation being ongoing, but he claims that he didn't know he was under investigation either until it was made public. On May 16, 2018, the Phoenix Police Department ceased their investigation due to insufficient evidence. But Enzo was already out the company at this point, and I think it's fair to say that since being fired from the WWE, Enzo has definitely made the most of his time. Let's just talk about some of the things he's done since he left the WWE. He released some music under the name Real One. It was absolutely awful. He got into a fight with Joey Janela at a Blink-182 concert, and he very infamously snuck into Survivor Series 2018 in a disguise, sat on a floor seat on hard cam, and midway through one of the matches, got up on his chair and started doing his catchphrases before security dragged him out. Absolute craziness. Enzo still wrestles to this day and you can find him in MLW. Him and Cass even reconciled and they teamed up for a bit on the indie scenes after they were both out of the WWE. They were even meant to join Ring of Honor. Oh god, remember that? Leave a comment if you think AEW should sign Enzo Amore and reunite him with Cass. 